Inside a row you can use the size box widget to add some horizontal spacing between the widgets. If you change the row to a column, then you need to change the size box width to size box height to add vertical spacing between the widgets. A container would also add spacing between the widgets, however a container also has a lot of other properties and therefore if you only want to change the spacing or the size of a widget, then use a size box instead. And finally, if you wrap around a widget a size box, then it forces a child to have this specific width and height. So as you notice, the child width and height is simply ignored. Also, if we change the size box to a smaller width and height, then the child width will also take this new width and height of the size box. If you use the double infinity for the size box width, then it will take the whole width of the parent widget. If you use the double infinity as a size box height, it will take the whole vertical space. And lastly, the size box expand takes the whole width and height of the parent widget. If a size box is inside a column that aligns widgets vertically, then you can only set the size box width to double infinity. However, if you set the double infinity also to the height, then this is not working and you get a layout error. Instead, you can wrap an expanded widget around this widget to force this widget to take the whole vertical space. Instead of using a fixed width and height for widgets in Flutter, you could also use the fractional size box to force the child widget to take 70% of the total available width. The child width is then simply ignored. Also, you could force the widget to take 80% of the total available height. Let's wrap a container around the fractional size box with a width and height of 300 and 100. The fractional size box will then only take 80% of the parent widget height and 50% of the parent widget width. Use the alignment property to align the fractional size box within the parent widget. And finally, inside a column or row, wrap a flexible widget around the fractional size box to make it work. A container or size box forces a child to be a specific width and height, no matter the size that is requested by the child widget itself. Instead of specifying for itself and a child widget a specific width and height, you could also allow the child widget to choose from a range of width and height values. In this case, the child widget tries to be bigger than the allowed maximum width and height values. Therefore, it simply takes these maximum width and height values instead. Also, if the child's width and height is smaller than the min width and height, then it will simply take this min width and height instead. And lastly, if the child width and height are inside of its parent minimum and maximum constraints, then it will simply take the child width and height that was requested. For the case that the child widget doesn't use or specify any width or height, then it will take the maximum width and height of the parent widget constraints. Even if you don't specify constraints on your own, every widget in Flutter will impose constraints on their child widgets. In this case, the scaffold imposes a screen size as a constraint on a child. Since both minimum values are zero for the width and for the height, these constraints are called loose constraints. In this case, the child widget has no width and height, therefore it will take the maximum width and height of its parent widget constraints. On the other hand, if the child widget has a width and height, then it will take these width and height since they are within the constraints. Also other widgets such as the column impose constraints on a children. For the width, the column imposes loose constraints. And for the height, unbounded constraints or also called infinite constraints. The constraint is unbounded if the max height is double infinity or if the maximum width would be double infinity. If you use instead of a column a list view, then the only difference is that the list view imposes for the min width also the screen width. If the minimum and maximum values are exactly the same for the width or also the same for the height, then these constraints are called tight constraints which means that only this exact single width can be used for the child width and the child width is ignored so you could also comment it out. For the height it is different, we have an unbounded constraint, which means if we comment the height out, then it will take zero height as the child widget. If for the unbounded constraint the min height is different than zero, then the child height is exactly this height. 
Anyway, for a list view and column, the min height is always zero. Therefore, it is always important to set the height for the child widgets within the list view or column widgets. The list view and column widgets have vertically an unbounded constraint, which means widgets that are placed inside are not restricted in the height, only an overflow error could occur. You can use the limited box to restrict and limit the height of the child widget. The height limit only applies if the parent widget has an unbounded constraint for the height. So if you remove the column widget, then the limited box doesn't have any effect anymore since the scaffold doesn't impose unbounded constraints on a child. So the limited box doesn't have any effect if any parent widget imposes a fixed height on a child. Let's go back to the column where the limited box works and let's replace the limited box by a container or a size box. This has exactly the same effect as the limited box inside the column. However, if you remove the column, then the container or size box will always constrain a child widget to this fixed height. Mm -hmm.